money where your mouth is, there are 10,000, over 10,000 Gazans dead and more buried, <laughs> half of whom are under the age of 18. And you are going to send money and talk about this? Where are they going to be lying to you in this room? Nowhere. So you are not offering morality of opinion. You are offering partisanship. And you are offering murder to more Gazans. Free power. My name is Connor O'Grejock, and it is an honor to bring my experiences before you today. Although I had hoped that my arrival to higher education would mark the arrival to a bastion of free speech, many, many of my first-hand experiences of freedom of speech violations at the University of Buffalo came during my membership of UB's chapter of Young Americans for Freedom. Two of the most prominent examples of freedom of speech bias that I witnessed at the university each came in the form of speaker events hosted by my chapter. In spring of 2022, as vice chair of my chapter, I had the opportunity to assist with hosting Lieutenant Colonel Alan West at UB, an event which was preceded by delays in the signing of our contract and a forced venue change, which was exposed by a Freedom of Information request. However, the most striking action taken against us followed Lieutenant Colonel West's speech, which had included a discussion of race in America and accounts from his decorated past. When the floor was opened to a question and answer session, student protesters shouted from their seats before the audiovisual employees from UB Student Association, the student government, cut powers to the event's microphones and speakers, ending the session. Confrontations continued upon the exit from the event, and once outside, as you just saw in the video before the opening <laughs> statements, chapter members were chased by a 100-person mob across campus. What that footage did not show was the former chapter chair being forced into a bathroom where she called 911 for rescue and another board member being physically attacked. With silence from the university and charges not pressed by the Erie County District Attorney's Office, I've since been left to consider the precedent this sets for those who plan to protest future events on campus. Though I may not be qualified to determine what constitutes adequate evidence in the eyes of the justice system, if those were who, who were involved in this mob were able to result to fear tactics and violence without consequence, what is keeping a pattern of this despicable behavior from being set and executed repeatedly? This thought remained on my mind throughout the planning of a March 2023 event that I hosted as chairman featuring Michael Knowles. This event would grow to gain more pushback than any event on campus in the previous four years and provide the most clear-cut examples of freedom, freedom of speech violations. This pushback included delays in contract signing from UB Student Association that deviated far from their outlined standard course of action, condemnation of the event by a local New York State Senator and multiple Western New York-based organizations, a circulated petition constructed by three university professors calling for the cancellation of the lecture, which gained thousands of student signatures, a forced venue change orchestrated not only by university administration this time, but voted on by a SUNY council, a multitude of threats and torn literature, and even a tweet from Governor Kathy Hochul on the day of the event calling comments from Michael dehumanizing. 